Okay, thanks very much everybody for coming and gathering today and can I just, um, on behalf of the steering committee, thank everybody for making the effort to be here on a beautiful Saturday. When we started our preparations for this, we had figured that Leinster weren't going to be in the Heineken Cup. We thought Munster wouldn't make it either. We figured the Fianna Fáil Irish wouldn't matter. <laughs> and um, <laughs> lo and behold, we forgot about, pu we forgot about Punchestown, Martin Hayden Stagg and the fact that Munster did qualify. But can I just thank you very much for being here um, and to join with us in a, in a very important uh, conference and, and the matter of where equality matters. Um, it's hard to believe that it's just a year since we met in Eli Weinbar and began the journey um, towards promoting and promulgating within and beyond Fine Gael the issue of equality for members of the LGBT community. Um, and I want to thank all of you uh, for travelling that journey in the year with us. We have made a, a significant progress internally within Fine Gael. And I have to say that in that 12 months, um, we've been joined by the chairperson of our internal justice committee, uh, Marcella Corcoran Kennedy, who's been a tremendous ally and supporter to us and has a very welcome addition to our steering committee. So, Marcella, thank you for being here and for being with us. In one year within Fine Gael, we've made a significant impact in terms of broadening the appeal of equality within the parliamentary party and also within the wider Fine Gael party itself. Um, we've held um, a very important public meeting with Minister Alan Shatter. We've marched in Dublin and Cork Pride um, with plans to do more this year. Uh, and also, we've, as a group, made a very <coughs> significant, I think, contribution and submission to the Constitutional Convention, which set out a very strong position, which I think mirrors the wider Fine Gael party in the issue of same-sex marriage and of marriage equality. Um, and I know that within the parliamentary party, uh, that debate, when it comes uh, after the submission of the report to the Constitutional Convention to the government, will, I think, be a very significant day for Fine Gael. <coughs> Our conference today on the issue of where equality matters is the beginning of a further extension of our remit and of our role, not just within Fine Gael, but within the political um, political base of Ireland. And it is our intention to broaden our activity as a, as a, as a group, um, both within the city of Dublin, but also across the, the, if you like, the four provinces of the country to reach out to Fine Gael members and others uh, who wish to become involved. Um, I want to uh, welcome also today our uh, local Fine Gael TD for the area, Pascal Donoghue, um, in whose constituency we are in. And I want to thank our, our four speakers, Mark, P.O. Catron and Brian and um, Colm, for, for their, first of all, agreeing to speak at, the, at this very interesting uh, topic and also for casting aside the political diverse views that they have to be here uh, to help shape our opinion to help influence us and to, if you like, challenge us as well. Um, and so with those opening remarks, I want to again thank you for being here and I want to in particular thank Deborah Sweeney from the Fine Gael Press Office for uh, coordinating and assisting it today um, and also just to um, convey our apologies from Paul Driscoll and from John Gannon and Adele Tierney from our steering committee uh, who can't be here today. So with that I want to ask um, Pascal Donoghue who's been a great supporter and a great friend to me personally um, and uh, one of the leading stars of Fine Gael to make the opening remarks. Pascal. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, on behalf of myself, as the local Fine Gael TD for Dublin Central, I want to heartily welcome you all here uh, to uh, the Ashleen Hotel here. It's on the uh, very perimeter uh, of Dublin Central. Uh, but I know that the issues that we're going to be discussing today uh, are going to be very much at the centre of politics uh, across the coming years. Um, and also on behalf of my colleague, Councillor Ray McAdam, whose local election ward you're located in, he'll be along later on this afternoon as well, but he asked me to pass on his wishes to you also. Um, before I just say a few further words of welcome, uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, Jerry Buttimer. Uh, I'm lucky uh, to have Jerry as a colleague, but I'm far prouder to have him as a friend. He has done really exceptional work within our parliamentary party over the last number of years and within our Oireachtas. Mm. And what he's doing here at the moment uh, is just one of the many things that he's working on uh, <coughs> to ensure that we can move our country and our party and our Oireachtas um, into a different and better place in a few years' time. Uh, it's quite a while since I've been in the Ashleen Hotel. 
Um, it closed for a while. Um, it was renovated. Uh, when I was coming in here, I noticed there's a plaque to the right of the front door to Ludwig Wittgenstein. Now, I don't know how many philosophy students that we have in here, and perhaps if you haven't studied philosophy, you wouldn't have heard of this man. But he was an extraordinary character who lived in Dublin for a very short period of time during the 1940s, I believe it was. Uh, he was born into wealth. He fought in a world war. He gave it all up. And he produced two different works that have been seen retrospectively as being works of philosophical genius. Now, when I was interested in that kind of thing, when I had the time to be interested in it, I could barely understand it then. And now, with the passage of time, I'm certain that I don't understand it at all. But he did have one um, uh, phrase that became, I think, his most famous quote when he was talking about the difficulty in relation to language. And he said, thereof what one cannot speak, one must be silent. And what he was talking about there was the difficulty in using language to describe reality. But of course, if you're in politics and if you're involved in public life, the imperative that's on you is the diametric opposite of that which is that when you're faced and when you're dealing with things and when you're involved in things that you believe really matter, silence isn't an option. You have to speak up on it and your voice has to be heard. And in the years to come, when we look back at what happened in Irish politics as a result of the horrific economic crisis that we're all mired in, I think one of the subtler consequences of it, but a deeply damaging one, has been that the entire political kaleidoscope has been entirely taken up by economic matters. That issues that should matter and do matter, their ability to get share of voice in our political system at the moment is so difficult. And the reason it's so difficult is because political parties and individual public representatives spend so much time dealing with issues that we're all so aware of. Should we burn holders? Should we not burn them? How do we deal with people who are in mortgage arrears? How can we confront the difficulties of catastrophic levels of unemployment. Um, and you deal with the individual issues that matter so much. People suffering, people that are in great difficulty, often great mental difficulty. And no matter how many times you connect that back to the solid but sure progress our country is making at the moment, we're continually just coming back to dealing with the economic crisis and the consequences of it. And this is why I believe a group like this is so important. Because it must remind us that what politics has to engage in is more than just the matters of the day. It's more than just the economic crisis that we're dealing with. It's fundamental matters of human rights, fundamental matters of our intrinsic equality as human beings. And the work that Jerry and all his colleagues are doing, and this group is doing, and I'm proud to be here with you today and to join in your work, is pivotal to our party engaging in politics holistically, and that's why it's so important. And I'll just end with a, a, a couple of thoughts that uh, I hope are, are relevant to the conversation we're having and the work that we're going to do. One of the things that I always feel very strongly about is when we're dealing with so many things in the economic sphere that unfortunately are finite. You know, when you're deciding if you only have a finite amount of money, if it goes in one area, that means it can't go in another. If you're deciding if you're going to invest energy and commitment in a particular area, unfortunately that means you can't do it in something else. <clears throat> the issue and work of human rights is fundamentally different. It's completely different. It's not a subtractive process. When you give people their human rights, when you allow them to flourish, that's not at the cost of anybody. It's to the benefit of everybody. And this, again, is why work like this really does matter. And one of the things that strike me when I've been at a meeting of the group, when I've heard Jerry and others talk about it, is the whole idea that engaging in this work has to be a conversation with people as much as a campaign. It has to be talking to people in the right tone and remembering that the people that really matter in all this is not your opponent who's at the other end of the table, the other end of the studio, standing outside your office, campaigning against you. The person you should be talking to is the person that's looking to make their mind up. The person who's looking at the debate, looking at the discussion, who's outside, who's informed, who wants to know what's the right thing to do. And that's why the tone of this group, the work that it's doing, matters to our party. It matters to what the party is going to do in the future. 
Um, and I want to say again how welcome you are to Dublin Central um, and uh, how much myself and Ray, who's here now, Councillor Ray McAdam, wish your afternoon well and how glad we are to be associated with us. Thank you.